to the brightest audience in the country. I am not Bob Inyart, America's most popular self-proclaimed right-wing religious fanatic, homophobic anti-choice talk show host. I am, however, Greg Perry, and out of an obvious lack of respect for his audience, they have asked me to fill in tonight during Bob's absence. We're going to talk about a lot of issues. We're going to have fun, talk about some news. That A lot of things have been happening in the news this week, a lot of things that are important to you, the audience of Bob Inyart Live, and you know who you are. So we're going to get started here in a minute. Bob is with his wife, lovely wife Cheryl, and uh, his, their boys, including uh, the baby, and three of their boys are in another part of America on a much needed vacation. Now, anytime anyone, anywhere, ever guest hosts anything, they always say the host is taking a well-deserved, much needed break. But this really is much needed. Bob has been spending the last several months or even years going to South Bend, commuting to South Bend, sometimes spending two weeks at a time up there, away from his family, which live here in Denver. And now that the show has moved back to Denver, to these lovely KWHD studios high atop the KWHD tower here in Denver, Colorado, uh, he's able to spend more time with his family, and so they are taking a, a break. And they are in, um, let's just say that they are in a a sunny and hot part of America. That, that will help zero it in. That'll help you know exactly where they are. They're somewhere where they're enjoying the sun and the heat. <laughs> Everything's hot in America right now. We're going to talk about the heat. Even the weather's news this week. It's really unbelievable. I, I travel a whole lot. I was in Dallas two days ago. I was in Denver today, and uh, I did a book signing here in Denver. Uh, there, this is the best place for books. If you ever come to Denver, Colorado, Go to the Tattered Cover Bookstore. We just had a blast. There were a bunch of people there. It was really a lot of fun. But it was hot. And just walking from your car into this bookstore is just, you just get in there and, and, and you're just very, very hot. The uh, heat is, is uh, in Tulsa, we have what we call a heat index. My home is in Tulsa. And you know how you have a wind chill factor in some parts of the country whenever it's cold? Well, in Tulsa, we have a lot of moisture in the air, a lot of humidity. And so we have a heat index. And any time that they say it's 104, 102, it's really like 109 or 110. That's what it feels like. So it's very, very hot. So I go around all these places, and I'm asking everybody, why is it so hot? You know, I'm in Denver. Why is it so hot? And you know what they always say? Not always. Most of the time, I'll get this response. Well, it's because of global warming. You know, I expect them to say, it's hot, you knucklehead, because it's July. It's the middle of summer. We're in the middle of the hottest month of the year. That's why it's so hot. But they say it's global warming. But the funny thing is, it'll be winter, and it'll be freezing cold last winter. And even into May, we had snow in places that hardly ever get snow. And so we were there, and I, I'd walk around, and I'd say, why is it so cold? And, and they would say, it must be El Nino. <laughs> El Nino? What are they talking about? I mean, it's either, is it global warming, or is it El Nino? You know, they can't make up their minds. If, if it suits their agenda, then it's global warming. But if, if it doesn't suit their agenda, then it's something else. They, they don't know what they're talking about. That proves that they believe more of Al Gore's speech than they believe in a thermometer. They just don't believe thermometers. They're knuckleheads, but that's okay. We understand that. You know, I'm no scientist, but we keep hearing about global warming and why, it, why it's such a danger to the ozone. And uh, I am a public school graduate, and therefore I know very little about science. I, probably can't even spell it properly. And, uh, but, and I probably have a lot of science wrong, being that I am a public school graduate. However, I do know that there are many scientists who believe that the ozone simply is not going away. There are just as many, probably, scientists saying that the ozone might open and close and, 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 and fix itself here and there, and then you have ozone holes here and there. Just as many people are saying that as they're saying they're destroying the Earth. We're destroying the Earth because of all this Freon that we're using. And the problem with that is there are a lot of problems with that. And even though I'm no scientist, you know, we have Mount Pinatubo, some volcano that has been erupting over the last few years. And Mount Pinatubo, I guess it erupted last a few years ago, and they were saying something like, if memory serves me, something like it destroyed more ozone in one single eruption than man has destroyed in the last 20 or more years. And so I got to thinking about that. If it destroyed, if one volcano eruption destroyed that much ozone, well, how, how long have volcanoes been around? Well, Christians would say volcanoes have been erupting for about 
four to six thousand years, maybe as many as ten thousand. Uh, liberals would say millions and millions and millions and millions of years volcanoes have been erupting. So whichever way you take it, liberals also say that the ozone is being depleted. So if we've had volcanoes erupting for the last millions and millions of years, then why do we have any ozone left? I mean, if, if the volcanoes destroy that much ozone, we should have none. If for somehow the environment doesn't repair itself. And we know that the environment's very efficient and it does things like that. So just common sense tells you that just because of volcanoes, we should have, we should have no ozone, but we do. And that, that's a very interesting thing to find. So anyway, in, in, in Tulsa, again, I travel a lot and I was in Tulsa the other day tooting around around in noon in my car you know honking the horns at everyone passing by because of the heat exhaustion it's like 104 and even the horn doesn't work it's so hot so you toot your horn nothing happens and I'm turning on the radio and it's high noon it's noon and and the news comes on the largest affiliate in Tulsa the largest radio affiliate I believe it's a rush affiliate it's a powerful station KRMG and their lead news story of the of the day I think it was at noon high noon the most important news hour of of the day, they come on and they say the following, Tulsa is having an ozone alert day, an ozone alert day. So okay, I'm thinking that's, it's hot. And then they immediately start interviewing our all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful city council on the radio. And here's what the guy said. He said, everyone who's driving their cars should turn off their air conditioners. And so the, my natural response, of course, just a gut reaction without even thinking about it, I reach down and turn up the air conditioner just as far as high as it will go. And, and I drive this, this big Suburban and the back seats are like 25 yards behind me and they have a separate blower. And so I, of course, reach up and I turn that on just as high as it will go, just to freeze that place out because it's hot. And I got to thinking, how dare that city council tell us to turn off our air conditioners? I mean, they have no right to do that. People will actually listen to what these guys say, and it's the lead news story on what I think is the most powerful radio affiliate in Tulsa at the noon hour, and they say, turn off your air conditioners? That makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. But then, let me tell you what they did. The second news story, the very next news story, number two of the day said that 29 people, and it's been more since then, 29 people in Oklahoma and Texas, in those two states, have died from heat exhaustion this season. So we have people dying from heat exhaustion, and what does the all-wise, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-liberal city council and, and our, our mayor at Savage, we have, a, we have a mayor at in Tulsa. I know that in Denver you have a mayor, we have a mayor at, uh, her name is, um, she goes by Mayor Savage, but her real name is Mrs. Grant Hall. And all these people at the city council, they want us to turn off air conditioner. I was talking to a friend of mine who lives in Tulsa. His name's Scott. He's just a great guy, real good friend. And Scott and I were discussing this, and I said, Scott, you know what? The mayor at the city council, anybody who says, there's a bug. We need, we need bug away. Any of the city council that says that we should turn off our air conditioners and then someone does it, what if some elderly lady's driving along? And she hears that, and she hears that she's killing the planet because she's having her air conditioner turned on. And she reaches down and turns that thing off, and then she, she has a, a heat stroke or something, and she, she crashes, and her car, her car crashes, and she dies. The city council is an accomplice in that case. The city council is then an accomplice in that case. That's terrible. That's a terrible thing to tell people when the heat is killing people all over the place. In two states, 29, st 29 deaths have happened in two states, and they say turn off the air conditioner. They are an accomplice. So, you know, speaking of my Suburban, um, it's really a neat vehicle. Lots of room, lots of people. You can really have a good time in it and take people to picnics or whatever. It's called a sport utility vehicle. Maybe that you've seen in the news recently, sport utility vehicles are all over the place. They're being touted by the liberals as being the these dangerous vehicles, and I'll tell you why they say that. Now, I put, I bought the, the sport utility vehicle. The I started hearing liberals talk about these things about about a year and a half ago, and uh, they would say how bad they are. They're bad for the environment. They're bad for this and that. And so I thought, well, they must be pretty good. I mean, the liberals don't like them. And so I start looking at these Suburbans. 
the largest non-commercial vehicle on earth. And I thought, well, that's probably what I want if it's the largest sport utility vehicle that there is. And so I think, well, my wife driving down the road in this sport utility vehicle, this Suburban, she is safer than she would be in any other non-commercial vehicle on the road. So naturally, I want to protect her. So I put her in that. It's a good thing to do. But being that it's a good thing, a lot of people don't like it. You know, these sport utility vehicles, they are the Joe Camel of automobiles. <laughs> Can you believe that? The Joe Camel of automobiles. The left just hates sport utility vehicles. And there's an article here in, uh, that I cut out for the show, and it's, it's from a Home and Away magazine. It's a, it's a AAA uh, magazine that, that talks about travel and all of that. You know, the Auto Club AAA. And they say that when a sport utility, they quote the New York Times here. The New York Times, you know, they said that these light trucks, sport utility vehicles, they're, desi they're classified as being light trucks. They are, this is the New York Times, they are deadly. Deadly. That's in quotes. They say that when a sport utility vehicle hits a small car, the small car loses. <laughs> Hello? I mean, I wonder how many millions of dollars they spent on a study saying that when a big car hits a small car, the small car loses. I mean, that's always the case isn't it? And you know, if they really wanted to save lives, instead of getting rid of the large vehicles, they'd want to get rid of these little tiny death traps. They'd want to outlaw all the small little tiny cars. That's how they would save lives, because everyone would be protected with all this metal around them in the sport utility vehicles. But, you know, they don't know up from down. They're at their wit's end. Liberals are at their wit's end, and it's not a very far journey. But they love tax-subsidized, money-hungry, money-losing government transportation. They love the Amtrak, and that's lost so much money over the years. The, the, the liberals just love the government. They love Amtrak. They love buses. They say, always ride the bus when it's an ozone alert day. Well, I wonder if a bus hit a Volkswagen Beetle, I wonder if the Beetle would lose. <laughs> Why aren't they outlying buses and Amtrak? It's because they really don't care anything about the lives. They just want everyone to be equal and miserable because misery loves company. It's really, it's really a hoot. But even this guy who wrote this article, Tom Strongman, he's obviously a, a pretty sharp guy because he ends the article with this. One thing is clear, millions of folks like sport utility vehicles and will keep buying them. That's right. This is how it should be because freedom of choice applies to the kind of vehicle you drive as much as it applies to the church you attend or to the books that you read. I mean, this guy's sharp. That's exactly right. But liberals, you know, they say that they're for choice. They're not for choice. They're only for choice whenever it's a woman who wants to, who, who it murders her baby. When she goes to an abortion mill and she wants to murder her baby, then they're for choice. But they're not for choice whenever you want to pick a car, a vehicle that's safe for your family. They don't like those types of choices. They don't want you making choices like that. So, but anyway, the reason that they, they also say that the reason they want to save the, the planet from these sport utility vehicles is, is this ozone, ozone, and they've already gotten rid of Freon. I mean, air conditioners simply don't work as well as they used to. You cannot buy a refrigerator anymore, legally, that has Freon. And we, we always, of course, say, give us free on or give us death. I mean, that's the only thing that really cools. It worked for, for so long, I don't know, 100 years we've had air conditioning with free on, maybe not that long, but it works great. It's the most efficient that we have, but the liberals got rid of it. And if, if the Republican Congress really had, really had guts, they would immediately, they would do a lot of things. They actually are working to, to get rid of the partial birth abortion, but they're not doing a great job at that, given what they have to work with probably. But if they really had guts tomorrow at 8 a.m., they would do away with this law that outlaws Freon. They would just do away with it. It's a stupid law. It doesn't have any basis in fact. And, and people could go back to having efficient cooling systems. So to save the environment, uh, it's the law of unintended consequences. That always happens whenever there are bad laws, the law of unintended consequences. I'll tell you why. Driving along Tulsa, and I'm sure it's true with most cities, in Tulsa is surrounded by a bunch of small cities. And now the last few years we've started noticing that these old refrigerators start appearing all along the side of the road as you're going into town. And we think, why is that? And then we find out that I have some, I used to be in the rental property business. I still have a couple left. I'm, I'm slowly getting out of the business. But we noticed that any time that we get rid of a refrigerator, uh, it's now a law, and I assume it's all over the country, it's now a law that we have to hire a licensed, trained technician to get rid of the Freon in our air conditioners and refrigerators before we take them to a dump. And that's about a $75 charge. So you have this 
refrigerator that's not worth two cents, and before you haul it to the dump to be buried in the dump, you have to pay a technician $75 to certify that he or she has removed the Freon. And so what do people do? It's the law of unintended consequences. They take their old refrigerators and they say, well, I could either pay $75 before the dump will take this fridge, or I can just in the middle of the night push it off my pickup truck out in the ditch. And that's what they do. And so you have these refrigerators lining the ditches all over the place. That's the law of unintended consequences because the liberals, they tried to clean up the environment and what happens? It just gets dirtier and dirtier and messier. It's really a mess, but what do you expect? Um, it's like the, the, the water closets in your bathroom. That, you know, the, the water closets behind your toilet, they now are required by law to be 1.5 gallons. Why is that? It's because we use too much water, you, you Americans. You use too much water. Every time you flush the toilet, you use too much water. So now by law, and by the way, a lot of the toilet manufacturers, they can sell the larger flush toilets that are four or five gallons, I think, to foreign countries. They just can't sell them to America. How do you like that? And so you have these, these toilets, these water closets that do not hold enough water to do their job. And so you ask any hotel owner that you know who may have remodeled in the last couple of years, ask that hotel owner if they have any problems with the plumbing. And that hotel owner will tell you they have a lot of problems with the plumbing. It's the law of unintended consequences because in order to use these things now properly, you have to use three or four times the amount of water that you would have used before because someone sits there and they just keep pushing the handle. That's crazy. And so instead of toilets, we've got these, these toilets. That's all that they are, but they don't care. They don't care how much money it costs. They don't care how many people are, are bothered by it. They don't care how many businesses go out of business because of the costs that have skyrocketed. They really don't. They really only want what they want, which is everyone to be equal, which means everyone to be miserable. And it's a bad thing. We're getting ready to take some calls. We've got some interesting calls coming up but first, I wanted to tell you about a story. It's really funny. I was called once again to jury duty a couple of weeks ago. And it seems as if I'm called all the time. That they just, and there, there are people that we know who have never been called. Janie, my, my wife, has never been called to jury duty, but I get called all the time. My mother gets called all the time, but my father's never been called. And you wonder why that's true. They say it's all random, but I don't believe that. But anyway, so I get called to jury duty once again, and it's really a waste of time because no jury would ever, no lawyer would ever let me on a jury. Never, ever, ever. I mean, it just wouldn't happen. They interview me, and then they send me back downstairs. And, and where I live, they put these 300 people that are potential jurors in the jury assembly room. And let me tell you about this room. It's this, it's the, I started to say it's this huge room. It's re not really that large considering there are 300 people in the room. It's miserable down there. The lighting is terrible. I know why they put the courts on the fifth and sixth floor of the courthouse. It's so the jurors' eyes have a chance to adjust to the lights whenever they get called up to a jury. And so you sit down there on these hard plastic chairs and you look up and the ceiling's just falling down and there are these lights hanging with their, by their wires over these water pipes and you think, I wonder how long you know, that'll cause a problem. Wonder, wonder who'll be electrocuted next. And you're sitting there for a week, 300 people wasting their time in this justice by committee system that we have, ready to have a popularity vote on, who, on whoever is voted to be guilty. And so we're sitting down there, and I was talking to this uh, law student, and she was down there with me, and I said, well, I'm kind of surprised that they called a law student to be a juror. I wouldn't think they would let you on a jury. And she said, well, as long as I haven't passed the bar yet, they will call me to jury duty, but as soon as I get up there, they'll send me back downstairs. As soon as the lawyers start interviewing me for what they call void dire, which means they're interviewing potential jurors for a case, as soon as they find out that she knows the law, they'll send her back down. And I think, well, that's interesting. So I say, well, why, if you know the law better than any other jury, why would they, why would they send you back downstairs? And she said, well, it's because I know it. She said the, the lawyers on the case will want to tell the jury their version of the law. And so if I know the law, then I'll know that their version's wrong, and they don't want that. So the, the more that you know about the law, the less of a good juror that you're going to be in the lawyer's minds. We're going to be right back. I'm going to finish up this story, so stay tuned. I'm Art Linkletter. Older Americans are living longer, staying healthier, and keeping more active than ever before. 
They're starting new careers and sharing new interests. You face some of the most important decisions of your life after age 50. Experts here at UCLA have developed this handbook, a consumer's guide to aging, to help you make those decisions. Health problems, diet, exercise, money, sex, housing. How do you cope with stress and emotion? It's all right in here, a consumer's guide to aging. It'll help you decide what's best for you. This book should be read by every American over 50. It also makes a wonderful gift. So do yourself and your loved ones a favor. Order today. To order your Consumer's Guide to Aging for only $19.95 plus shipping and handling, have your credit card ready and call now. 1-800-718-4900. That's 1-800-718-4900. Bible study is my passion. On Sunday nights in Denver, friends and I get together for fellowship, study, and some great potluck dinners. You can be a part of our study by signing up for our monthly Bible study series. Call one 888 8 yard and get four audio tapes monthly for only $24.95. I teach through an overview of the whole Bible and then a book-by-book -book study. So for the tapes, call one 888 8 8 yard Join the Enyart Advanced Team. We're looking for a few good men and women who want to help this show not only survive, but thrive in your area and around the country. You can join the Enyart Advanced Team by purchasing a kit with all you need to get started, including video, literature, and an instructional cassette featuring tips from me on everything from supporting the show and promoting it to making money for yourself by selling advertising. Call one 888 8 God instituted the death penalty in Genesis. Did Jesus repeal it in the Gospels? The answer is in our two-hour video called God and the Death Penalty. Now you can get the video that stands the liberal view of justice on its ear and provides you with the hard-hitting biblical teachings of Jesus and the Apostles endorsing the death penalty in the New Testament. Call one 888 8 and order yours today. Live, the, the Godzilla of talk shows. We have some great calls coming up. I want to finish this story about my jury service. You know, they say it's your most important civic responsibility, but if you don't show up, they'll come after you. They'll let murderers go free, but if you miss jury duty, they will hang you. And so, again, I was talking to this law student. They would never let her on the, on the jury. And it's really a, a bad system. Whenever, whenever 12 people vote or nine, depending on the jury, they vote on whether someone's guilty, but really it's a popularity vote. And you know, murder is not wrong if 12 people vote that it's wrong. Murder is wrong. And we shouldn't have popularity votes to decide whether someone is, is wrong or right or something that they did is wrong or right. That's why they have judges. But the problem is the judges, they're like Pontius Pilate. They just wash their hands of whatever case it is and they say, well, it's the jury's decision. But that doesn't mean anything because the jurors have no responsibility for anything that they do. And if 12 people vote that someone's guilty or if 12 people vote that someone's innocent and they're wrong, no one's to blame. You can't go back to the jury. And, and, and get them because they're protected under the law. They're not protected from the, from the criminal that comes after the individual jurors, which is always a potential hazard to be on a jury, but they are protected because no one is guilty in our society. Even the criminal, someone murders somebody, they go free a year later, sometimes sooner, sometimes longer, but they go free. And no one is responsible in letting an innocent person go free because you had a popularity vote and that person was guilty. That is just as bad as letting a murderer go free. Do I have that right? That letting a murderer go free who is innocent. I said that all wrong. If someone's committed, if someone has committed murder and you let them go free, that is just as wrong as someone who didn't commit the murder but you put in jail. That's a bad thing. That is equally wrong, even though a lawyer will say, well, it's better to let an, a guilty man go free than to let an innocent man hang. Well, it's bad to do both. It's bad to do either. And so what would happen if we had judges that actually made decisions? I mean, why do they call them judges anyway? If they made a decision, then that person would be held accountable for the decision that he makes. And if the judge makes an incorrect decision, 
If, if he lets someone go and that person murders again, or if you find out later that person's guilty, the judge should be responsible for that decision. And guess what? We would have a lot more better decisions made if that were the case, if one person were responsible. But no one's responsible. The lawyers, the juries, no one are responsible. And the, you always hear, well, it's not a perfect system, but it's the best in the world. But no, it's the worst in the world. But if you tell a big lie long enough, everyone starts to believe it. And that's what we're told from, from cradle to grave. That's what we're told, that it's the best system in the world. And so, you know, you want to ask, why do we have so many murders, violent rapes, violent deaths, all of that? The um, lawyers, lawyers basically are corrupt, basically, because they uphold a corrupt law. I mean, I'm sure there are some good lawyers somewhere. I mean, there's got to be. You know, the odds would say that there are. I mean, I'm sure there's a Christian lawyer out there, but there's also probably a Christian murderer somewhere, too, or Christian prostitute, maybe. I don't know. But uh, so... Lawyers are corrupt because they, well, for one thing, two words, they plea bargain. They say, well, we'll compromise this person. We'll give you this if you give us that. That's not a good thing to do. Either, either your person is guilty or your person is innocent, and you should work accordingly. The, uh, I have a friend who's a lawyer. He's a great guy, and uh, I, you know, I forgive him of that. He, he, still, he still is a good friend. I, I have forgiven him. I don't think that he's apologized to his neighbors yet, but I, I know that there's still time for him to do that. So anyway, the law should be... We have lawyers because the law is, is hard to understand. And guess what? The lawyers made the hard, law hard to understand. The law should be simple enough for an eight-year-old to understand. Uh, you have right and wrong. You either murder or you don't murder. Well, you should not murder. That's right. Do not murder. But we have all these levels. We've got, we've got violent rape and date rape and this kind of rape. And you shouldn't trivialize things like that. That's, that's an offense to women to trivialize something like that and say there are different levels of rape. That's a, that's a, that's a terrible, that's a sick system is what it is. And so we need to fix the law, and one way to do that is to get rid of the jury system, but of course that's probably not going to happen. Um, today we, whenever someone rapes somebody, we, we try to love the rapist and understand the sex offender. And, oh, by the way, we'll kill the baby, but we need to baby the rapist and, and try to understand why he did what he did. That's a very bad thing to do. But back to the juries. One funny thing, the, the judge would sit there, and whenever you, we would be called up for a trial, we would be sitting in these real nice plush seats in the jury pool, the jury area. And down in that jury assembly room, the, the JAR, the J-A-R, they stick you in this JAR while you're waiting on a jury. And whenever they got up there, the first question the judge would ask would, is there anyone here who has a physical defect or disability that would not allow you to sit through two or three days of a, of a trial? And I'm sitting there in this leather chair thinking, well, if I had back problems, this is where I'd want to be. I wouldn't want to be back down there in the jar sitting on those, those plastic, hard plastic seats that were made in 1959 with, with lights hanging over water pipes by the, by the wires on top of me. You know, that's where you'd want to be. Anyway, that was kind of funny. This whole thing, they asked that question because of, of a very corrupt law called the Americans with Disabilities Act. That's a very destructive system. And it's kind of a personal vendetta of mine that I want to go against this law because it destroys so many people. And uh, we've talked about this before on the show, and I want to uh, tell you a little bit about it now. But I, we might take a call here in a second. It looks like, it looks like Sid, oh, we've got a call from Wilson, from South Bend, Denver, just all sorts of calls. Let me see what Sid has to say real fast. Grant. Sid, you're on Bob and you're at Live. Speak your mind, please, with Greg Perry. Hi, Grant. It's a pleasure to talk to you. You too. Glad to talk to someone that refused to become a victim of the system. Ah, thank you. Um, I don't want to talk about... The reason I called was about the, the guy that killed the cats a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Okay, well, I, he, uh, he got 12 years for that. Yeah. And I think that he, they should give him, instead of 12 years in jail a job at the SPCA. Okay. You know, it'd just be a fitting job for him. Maybe he could get it right. Oh, I guess that sounds reasonable. He could get it right that way. Hey, listen, Sid, we got to go to a commercial, but we'll be right back, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Talk to you in a minute. Right.
Folks around the country are going wild over the plot. We've been overwhelmed with comments about how the plot has helped people to understand the Bible. Order your copy of the manuscript that's helping Christians get to know the Bible better and clearing up many problem passages. You'll get 310 pages of serious Bible teaching that's changing lives. Call one 888 yard The manuscript is $49.95 or send what you can and others will help us send you a copy. The debate about capital punishment is about justice. We take justice seriously at Bob and Yard Live, so we're offering our two-hour video that explores the New Testament support for the death penalty. Be prepared with biblical evidence the next time you find yourself defending the death penalty against some soft-headed liberal. Call one 888 yard It's $34.95 or whatever you can afford. one 888 yard Bob and Yurt Live is on the air thanks to the support of our audience. One way to help us each month is to use Lifeline as your long distance phone company. Lifeline gives 10% of their gross revenue to Christian pro-family organizations like this program. I would greatly appreciate it if you could call right now, 800-684-2931. You'll get great long distance, save a lot of money, and help Bob and Yurt Live stay on the air. Stay tuned to receive your free trial version of America's number one accounting software for small business. Okay, folks, here's your business cards, letterhead, and my invoice. How did you create this invoice? With QuickBooks accounting software, I called the toll-free number and got a free trial version. Wish I had time to learn new software. It takes no time. Answer a few simple questions, and QuickBooks tailors itself to your business automatically. And if you can write a check, you can use QuickBooks. QuickBooks makes it easy to see who owes you money and how much you owe. It also does invoicing, payroll, and inventory. Plus, you get customizable reports and graphs that puts you in control of your business. To try QuickBooks free, call 1-800-590-2429 for your free trial version. Or if you also need time tracking, estimating, and project costing, then try QuickBooks Pro. Either trial is yours free for calling 1-800-590-2429. That's 1-800-590-2429. Welcome back to the show. We have a special in-studio welcome to the Honorable Roy Romer. Welcome, sir. It's uh, governor, governor of uh, Colorado. It's an honor. I didn't know you were a fan of the show. That's nice to have you. Um, well, I want to get back to Sid's call here in a second, but there's an announcement that we need to make. Decatur, Alabama, those of you in Decatur, it's going to be fun. Saturday, August 22nd, Bob is going to be at the Fellowship Bible Church. And that's at 2916 Sandlin Road Southwest. S-A-N-D-L-I-N, -N, Sandlin Road Southwest. And he's doing a God's Criminal Justice Seminar. Now, picketers have been expected, and it sounds as if there are going to be some picketers. And, of course, they're welcome, but I would suggest that if you want to picket, get there early and get you a good seat and get you a good place in line because hopefully there will be you know, thousands of you. That would be wonderful. We really welcome those types of, of people. However, there are no, there's no free admission. We know if there are liberals around, they're going to try to sneak in without paying. And sorry, even if you pick it, even if you make signs, we're not going to give you free admission, but you can pay to get into God's criminal justice system. You'll have a blast. They're just a lot of fun. So that's Decatur, Alabama, Saturday, August 22nd. I want to get back to Sid's call here in a second. Uh, he's got the solution to these cat killers out there, and uh, I think it sounds pretty reasonable. One thing I was thinking about this jury duty thing, one man tried to get out of it. Actually, we all try to get out of it because it's such a waste of our time, of our effort. It's a, it's a horrible thing to be a part of justice by committee, to vote on somebody, whether they're guilty or innocent, when they were guilty the moment they pulled the trigger if they committed the crime. And this man's wife, he had, uh, she has cancer. And so he's called to jury duty, and the very first day he goes downstairs or upstairs from the dungeon, the jury assembly room, the jar that they stuck us in, this dark place. And he went upstairs to try to get off the jury for that week because his wife had cancer. And if I understand it right, she was having surgery for her cancer that Friday. This was a Monday. She was having surgery on Friday. They said, nope. 
You have to go back down in the jar. See, they punished him for even, even thinking that he could get out of something like that. They punished him and sent him back downstairs, and they said, Friday, we will let you out. They'll let him out of the jar on Friday. So isn't that a, a great thing to do? What a loving, what a great system to be a part of. Hey, Sid, I want to go back to Sid on line four. Sid, so your solution to the, to the cat killer is to give him a job at the, SP, at the SPCA? Yeah, well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Because he learns how to do it? Well, maybe. If he was doing it with a baseball bat, you know, look at all the money he would save the government because they have, I think, a decompression chamber. They put him in there, yeah. and they suck all the air out. Their eyeballs pop out. Now, that's not cruel? Right. <laughs> right. You know, that's ludicrous. Yes, uh, it's very cruel. Believe it or not, I work for General Motors. Ah. Are you working or you're not working for General Motors? Oh, yeah, I'm working. Okay, good. But I make air conditioners. Ah. <laughs> Talk to me. Uh, the Freon, the, it used to be Freon 12. Yeah. Now it's Freon 134A. Okay. And it is less efficient. That's a surprise. And it's corrosive. Ah. And the 12 wasn't. So it damages your engine. Uh, well, it, it eats up the, the tubing faster. You know, ah. it's hard to run the system. You know, but it's a closed system. Yes. In either case, until it eats through. True. You know, eventually it'll start to leak. But um, the at least the, the 12 was not as corrosive. Okay. But, so, you know, they say, well, shut your air conditioner off. Well, it's a closed system. It, doesn't, it isn't going to be leaking out just because you're using it. Right, but they don't care about that. Well, they're lying to us. Yeah, they want us to be all miserable. Yeah, they, they want you to think that you're, you're putting Freon in the air by running it. Right. Well, that's, that's ludicrous. That's crazy. Yeah, it really is sad. Hey, right on. You're, you're doing some good good work. You're in Wilson, New York, is that right? Yeah, but I work in Lockport. It, okay. Uh, it used to be Harrison Radiator. They made all of the General Motors radiators, air conditioners, heater cores, oil coolers. Yeah. And now they also have a plant down in Alabama. Ah. And one in Mexico, and that's where I'm afraid the jobs are going, you know. Yeah. Um, well, they will if we keep striking, that's for sure. Well, that's why they are on strike, yeah. though. Yeah. Uh, well. They are on strike because of outsourcing. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, they're one of the newspapers up here referred to the suburban as a gas-guzzling behemoth. Ha! <laughs> Isn't that great? What yeah, about? I, was, I like that. What about the protection they give to a family? They they didn't say anything about that. Oh, of course not. <laughs> no, they were there, but they. You know, we heard the same thing about the sport utility vehicles that sure. they were. Oh, you know, they're dangerous to the little cars. You know. Yeah. So they ought to outlaw the little cars. I well, think. Well, certainly. Uh, the ozone, the thing about the ozone, uh, it's created by electric motors. So whenever there's a lightning storm, wouldn't that make ozone? I would think so. It does. Uh, well, I, I strongly suspect, and especially given the business you're in, you know more about it than I do about the ozone. Yeah. So, hey, well, th thanks for calling, Sid. I appreciate well, it. You know, it's the Dow Chemical Company. Yeah. They had the patent on Freon 12. Ah. And... You can only keep a patent for so many years. Right. It was running out. Right. So they had to do something fast. Right. Yes. I know. That's true. Follow the money. You'll always find a liberal. Well, yeah. Hey, I, thank uh, <laughs> I had a refrigerator die here. Yes. A few years ago. Oh, you can just throw it along the side of the road. Well, I cut it up and put it in a garbage can. Ah, they hated that. Put it that. in there in pieces. They didn't say anything. Yeah, put it in black sacks and they yeah, won't Yeah, every week they took a little of it and after about a month it was gone. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Used to, we'd take them to the dump. They'd be done with. It'd be nice. It'd be cheap. It'd be easy. We right. don't have, we don't, we're not able to do that anymore. Right. They wouldn't be sitting around for little kids to get inside. Yeah. Hey, Sid, I appreciate your call. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was Sid in Wilson, New York. wonder how he gets the show in Wilson, New York. He must have a satellite system or something. Uh, I know that we have... Maybe one affiliate up in, up in New York, Bobby Newhart Live does, and lots of satellite stations. So we, uh, we're getting ready to take a break. We've got some other really good calls here coming in, Joe and Steve, and we'll get to those here in a second. We've got some more in the news I want to cover. The, um, remember I told you the jury always, the judge asked if we were comfortable in our chairs. Well, he asked that because of the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA they call it, or if you say it backwards, it's the ADA. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Americans with Disabilities Act because it's one of the most destructive acts of Congress that has been passed in the last 200 years. I'll tell you all about it whenever we come back from this break. Stay tuned.
Folks around the country are going wild over the plot. We've been overwhelmed with comments about how the plot has helped people to understand the Bible. Order your copy of the manuscript that's helping Christians get to know the Bible better and clearing up many problem passages. You'll get 310 pages of serious Bible teaching that's changing lives. Call one 888 yart The manuscript is $49.95 or send what you can and others will help us send you a copy. Well, um, I'd like to share with you a story about Lifeline. Yeah. Well, um, we get a call the other day. Yes. And they asked for me, and it's AT&T. They asked for you? Yeah, and I don't know how they got my name. That's just strange. And, um... <laughs> They're desperate. <laughs> and they go, um... I go, I'm 11 and a half years old, and they go, Well, I guess you don't make decisions around here, huh? And I go, Well, I know what my parents would say. <laughs> That's and so cool. I go, we don't want to have nothing to do with y'all or MCI or none of that because y'all support abortion, Good. homosexuals, and all of that. Good for you. And I said, we're a Christian. Good. And she goes, well, are you insinuating that we are not Christians? And I, and I said, yes, and I hung up the phone on them. <laughs> <laughs> to support Bob through Lifeline, this is the number to call. 1-800-684-2931. Angel, you're a sweetheart. Thank you. <laughs> now you can have some of the top Christian movies in your home at a special low price. Get a powerful 40-minute evangelistic film, The Appointment. Liz, on September 19th at 6.05 p.m., you are going to die. And an inspirational film for teens, Second Glance. Your daddy boy, man, let's go. Hurry up, man, we need to get there. Come on, what are you doing? Come on. What's going on here? What are you looking at? Plus, as an added bonus, we'll include the classic movie, The Hiding Place, in this package. To get your personal copies of The Appointment, Second Glance in The Hiding Place, send your check or money order for $49.95 plus $5 for shipping to Family Theater. Or call us right now using your credit card and ask for offer number 22. These videos will be shipped immediately. We hope you'll take advantage of this special offer, offer number 22. Call now. Welcome back to Bob Inyart Live, where we build a better America one viewer at a time. I'm Greg Perry filling in for Bob tonight, and uh, we'll be here for tonight, maybe tomorrow night. It depends on how much of the audience we lose with me being on the show, haha, -ha. how many sponsors that we lose over the next 30 minutes or so. I'm sure that Coca-Cola, Heinz, all those big name sponsors of Bob Inyart Live, they probably won't hang around, but we hope that they do. I was telling you about the Americans with Disabilities Act. I ordered this, this manual from from the Department of Justice. That's, that's kind of a laugh right there, the Department of Justice. The Americans with Disabilities Act, it seems like such a great thing. It's under the Department of Justice, under Janet Reno's on hand. Is it Janet Reno or Janet Nero? I think it's Janet Nero. I always, maybe it's Janet Reno. I always get that mixed up. Janet Reno, Janet Nero. I don't know why. Um, anyway, maybe it has something to do with history, right? They are control freaks. This Department of Justice is a, a department of control freaks. You won't believe what they require out of American business, but guess what? It's not just American business. They're going to start requiring you and your home to follow these same things before you know it. And so I ordered this. Now, maybe originally some of the people behind this act had good intentions. Of course, we know what, the, what road is paved with good intentions, right? The Americans with Disabilities Act, it was, it was one of Bob Dole's three proudest accomplishments, he said, when he left the Senate. One of his three proudest accomplishments. I mean, what liberal camp did this guy come from? The other, one of the other three was food stamps, so that kind of puts it in perspective. Anyway, and of course, George Bush signed it into law. Both, both of those are embarrassing that they would do something like that. But I want to I wanted walk you through some of this. We've got some calls we're getting ready to take. But this little pamphlet, this ADA guide for small business, and guess what? It's also going to be a guide for large businesses and you and your homes. They tell you exactly, I'll tell you how I got this number. I saw one time, got this pamphlet. I saw a number you could call if you wanted to sue somebody for 
because you had a disability. You could sue someone over that. It was really a, a great and lovely free country that we live in. And so they gave us a 1-800 number. I don't know if you've ever seen Janet Reno on the, on the uh, television saying <clears throat> it's the Americans with Disabilities Act, it's not, it's, not a, it's not just a law. It's not just a good thing. It's a law. Or maybe she says, it's not a good thing. It's the law. That makes more sense. So surely she says that. It's not, of course, I can't get my voice as, as deep as, as she is. But anyway, she puts this 800 number up on, the, up on the commercial that you can call and get all this publication. And if you call this 800 number, you will realize what a federal bureaucracy this law has created in a short four-year period. It's unbelievable. So we have all these things. Guess what? Round doorknobs are now illegal. How do you like that? How do you like your freedoms being eroded? You can't even put round doorknobs in your place of business anymore can't do it. They're illegal because someone may not be able to use them. Um, what about a high counter? The counter's too high. Well, guess what? If you lower it too much, they're going to fine you or put you in jail at gunpoint if you don't follow what they say if your counters are too low. So your counters have to exactly be what they say in this book, that 44 and one quarter, one eighth of an inch or something like that high. I mean, it's really crazy. What about all that accessible parking that we see all over the place? I just laugh every time that I see it. And guess what? Whenever you have a business, and you have, um, uh, isn't it funny that every drive-up teller now, every drive-up automatic teller in the world, even if it's in the middle of the desert, the drive-up teller has, has Braille on it so that you can Braille it. Can you imagine? I mean, who could drive up there and then use and then not be able to read or see the teller? That's kind of interesting, I think. But these, these accessible parking, guess what? I think that we're going to live to see accessible parking in our own residences. I think we're going to have access to getting in and out of a building at our own homes. Uh, it's very consistent with everything that they want to do. How many, truly, how, many, how many truly handicapped people, and by the way, this law covers many, many more, how many truly handicapped people feel real good when, when the American flag someday is going to be a wheelchair parking sticker? Because it's got to be on doors, it's got to be on, on the parking lots, it's got to be on buildings, it's got to be on restrooms. How do you think someone feels when the government says, you can't do it without us. You need us. You need us to help you. I tell you, I am so glad that I was born and raised in a society without the ADA, without the, without the society telling me that I can't do it on my own, that I don't have any abilities, that I can't do it without the government, without Janet Nero's help. Oh, there I go again, Janet Nero. It's, it's amazing what they, and inside this book, they go on to list law after law, locate parking spaces and access aisles so that they are relatively level, one to 50 maximum slope in all directions. You can't even read this stuff. I mean, no public school graduates can understand this, but they make it as complicated as they can so that they can get whomever they want. And if someone, if, if there's someone they don't like, they can go after them because of this law. And the, the, the disabled aren't the only ones they're going after. You know, whenever they passed this law, they said that it was because it was to help it was to help get rid of discrimination against the handicap in America. Now, let me ask you, how many people did you know who would go around kicking wheelchairs and, and pushing people over on crutches and, and not letting them in their business, not helping them open the doors if they needed to? No one did that. This law was not passed to lower discrimination against the handicapped. It was not. It was so that Janet Reno and her department can have more control over our lives. And it proves it. You know, they have these signs now. Here's what they say. Signage provided at it, and again, it's in this, this mishmat gobbledygook that you can't even understand. But they say the example of a sign that directs customers to the nearest accessible entrance, and then it's for those places that physically have steps or something going down into the building and that you cannot have wheelchair access because of the, of the height of the steps. So they say that you must have an, a side door for the, for the wheelchair access. And they have an example of the sign that points you around the corner. And I, you know, liberals used to like it when blacks had to go around the side to go into a building. Liberals really like those types of things. And they like it whenever wheelchair people have to go around to the side of the building instead of maybe getting help for someone. Any business who wants to make their business more accessible to someone in a wheelchair or on crutches, that's a great thing. It's a great thing when you help someone cross the street who may have a problem crossing the street. But when Janet Reno comes up with a gun at your head and says you will help this person cross the street, that's coercion. That's a very bad thing. That's discriminatory against these people. If a restaurant has several steps at the entrance and no access entrance, you must provide home delivery. It's all a mess. We'll talk about it when we come back.
Folks around the country are going wild over the plot. We've been overwhelmed with comments about how the plot has helped people to understand the Bible. Order your copy of the manuscript that's helping Christians get to know the Bible better and clearing up many problem passages. You'll get 310 pages of serious Bible teaching that's changing lives. Call one 888 yard The manuscript is $49.95 or send what you can and others will help us send you a copy. This video explores the geographic and historic evidence for the resurrection. Come with us on a journey into the heart of Israel to a place called Mount Moriah. Learn how God revealed his mercy on the threshing floor of Ornan, how Abraham was tested and the temple established. See the haunting view of a place called the skull and then the empty tomb from which our Lord rose on Mount Moriah. Call one 888 8 Bob Enyart Live is on the air thanks to the support of our audience. One way to help us each month is to use Lifeline as your long distance phone company. Lifeline gives 10% of their gross revenue to Christian pro-family organizations like this program. I would greatly appreciate it if you could call right now, 800-684-2931. You'll get great long distance, save a lot of money, and help Bob Enyart Live stay on the air. You know, ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? If so, Invention Submission Corporation has information to help you get started. ISC is America's largest inventor service firm. Call now and learn how to submit your idea to companies through ISC's data bank and apply for a patent. Even if your idea is just to improve an existing product, call for ISC's free information. For your free information, call 1-800-972-3100. Call now. It's not opinion. Russian forces are now within blocks of the palace. It's not conjecture. Republicans are pushing ahead with efforts to streamline the tax code. It's not sensational. President Clinton has declared 24 California counties disaster areas. It's not anything you would otherwise expect from network news. It's no-nonsense news from around the nation and around the world. It's the American Times. sign that they showed. I, I took a picture of this sign whenever I was in Philadelphia recently. Let's bring that sign back up if we could. It's really a riot. It's a sign of a wheelchair parking, but if you look closely at the very bottom of the sign, it says government employees only. What? So I, I don't really understand that. It's kind of ambiguous to me what that sign means. Are they saying that government employees are all, are all disabled? I mean, that would make sense. But if that's what they meant, then um, they don't really need, first of all, they don't really need signs for that in most cases. But also I think that what they're really trying to do is to tell us that if you work for the government, you transcend if you're disabled. It transcends the fact that you're disabled. You know, liberals, they, they love segregation. They love to segregate people into all sorts of groups. They always bring up color and race and all sorts of things. And they like to segregate people who are different. And they like to tell people who are disabled that you will park in these spaces. Of course, don't park in the ones that the government owns, you know, unless, unless you are for the government. But they like to segregate people. Just try some time, if you don't think they believe in segregation, just try some time to pull your car into a wheelchair lot without a, without a sign that says that you're, you're allowed to park there. What I think that we ought to do is to put wheelchair signs on all parking spaces, only the ones that aren't for the people who are, quote, disabled, which don't mean wheelchair in most cases as far as the ADA concerns, uh, the ones that, uh, that are not really wheelchair access parking lots, we should put a red slash through them so that no one could park in that parking space if they're in a wheelchair because then it would be even and it would be equal and it would just be a beautiful free country again whenever we knew where we could park and where we can't park. So anyway, it's a real bad deal. But one of the things that we must we must understand about this ADA. And I'm going to read to you an article from the Daily Oklahoman. The Daily Oklahoman is by far Oklahoma's best newspaper. Uh, we have something in Tulsa called the Tulsa Daily Worker. I, I think that's what they call the, the Tulsa Daily Newspaper. But the Daily Oklahoman is really a much better newspaper. And here's what they said on November 10th of last year. Is HIV a disability? 
hmm, that means maybe it is and maybe it's not, in some people's opinion. A federal appeals court in Boston heard arguments Friday on whether the Americans with Disabilities Act should apply to an estimated 650,000 people infected with the virus that causes AIDS. Now, get this, this was back in November of last year. Wonder if these people are disabled, which means can they fall under this act and start suing people and just have a wonderful, beautiful time? The case stems from a Maine dentist's refusal to treat a woman infected with HIV virus who was asymptomatic in his banger office. In other words, this woman went in to have her teeth fixed. The dentist, Random Bragan, offered to treat the woman, Sidney Abbott, who needed a cavity filled and a cleaning in a hospital setting. He thought it would be better to, to treat her in a hospital because she had HIV. They were better, better equipped to handle that sort of a thing. Even though he had no hospital affiliation at the time, court papers said. Now this is the true reason liberals support the ADA, and I think it's the original reason they wanted the ADA. Notice the timing of it. AIDS had been around for a while. All of a sudden we get the ADA out of the blue. Wonder why? Wonder what the result of this case was uh, back from back in November of this woman who sued this dentist who said, well, sure, I will work on you. I, I have compassion for you. I certainly want what's best for you and also want about what's best for my dental assistants and everybody else. Let's be safe and let's go to a hospital and, make, and, and have this treatment done. Wonder what the result was. Well, we know what the result was. Because in the Tulsa Family News, the Tulsa Family News, now this, this rag is a, is a piece of paper that comes out, obviously, in Tulsa. And they call it the Tulsa Family News to mislead people because it's a, it's a homo newspaper. It's a newspaper published by, written for, and written by homosexuals. And so, and it, it's given away at, at Barnes and Albull bookstores. And surely you've heard of Barnes and Albull. Uh, they have in Tulsa, they have these, you know that they're liberal papers if they stick them in the doorway free of charge so that anyone walking in and out can have one. You know that they're liberal newspapers, but you also know that they're advocating in some way children having sex if they put these newspapers at the level that only children could see them. And the Tulsa Family News is always given away free at knee level for a child. You have to, if you're an adult, you almost hurt your back reaching down to look at what this thing is. Here's what they said about this law. Here's what they said about this, this case. It's true. The Supreme Court rules disability is covered by HIV. In a decision praised by advocates for AIDS, pa AIDS patients and the disabled, the Supreme Court ruled that people inf infected with HIV are protected and that anti-discrimination laws, even if they have no visible AIDS symptoms, they still fall under the ADA. It's a crime. We're going to talk more about it later. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you tomorrow night. Bye-bye. Now you can have some of the top Christian movies in your home at a special low price. Get a powerful 40-minute evangelistic film, The Appointment. Liz, on September 19th at 6.05 p.m., you are going to die. And an inspirational film for teens, Second Glance. Yo, daddy boy, man, let's go. Hurry up, man, we need to get there. Come on, what are you doing? Come on. What's going on here? What are you looking at? Plus, as an added bonus, we'll include the classic movie, The Hiding Place, in this package. To get your personal copies of The Appointment, Second Glance in The Hiding Place, send your check or money order for $49.95 plus $5 for shipping to Family Theater. Or call us right now using your credit card and ask for offer number 22. These videos will be shipped immediately. We hope you'll take advantage of this special offer, offer number 22. Call now.
And when you think, I don't know that I'm the kind of stuff that God can multiply through, he says, I'm praying that you'll also see that the way that God is able to do that is the same power that when he raised up Jesus from the dead, that same power is moving toward you. So that in wherever you go, any day, any time, the resurrection life of Jesus in you, which encounters the death syndrome in our world, will begin to multiply through you to turn dying situations into living ones because the resurrected Jesus lives in you. He's our savior. He's our healer. He's our baptizer with the Holy Spirit and our soon coming King. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. From the Church on the Way, the first four-square church of Van Nuys, California, welcome to the Living Way. Declaring God's Word in a new and life-giving way through the ministry of Pastor Jack Hayford. Today, Pastor Jack tells us how the Holy Spirit wants to distribute his gifts through us so the body of Christ can be built up or to be spiritual investors for him and his glory. That's coming up on Living Way, but first, these special words. Have you ever been challenged with the task of explaining your Christian faith to someone else? Perhaps you've been confused about what Christians believe. What are the basics of Christianity, the essentials that are important to true faith? If you've asked any of these questions, then this free study book will give you a foundation upon which to build your relationship to Jesus. Just ask for Foundations of Our Faith when you write Living Way Ministries, Box 60888, Los Angeles 90060. Let's open our Bibles together to the first chapter of the book of Ephesians. Read with me, if you will, verses 11 and 12, chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Let's read aloud and together and uh, read loudly. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that 